All right, Susie, you can go ahead. Hi, Quinn. Um, it was really nice to see you back on the field last week, and I'm wondering if you can just talk a little bit about your injury journey and um, what it was like to get back on the field. Yeah, it was really exciting to get back on the pitch. Um, I think it's been a while since I've had an injury that's lasted a couple of months, and so it's always you're always itching to get back. Um, but yeah, I just it was really great to get back, and I felt really good. I felt really prepared um, by our staff to get back on the field, and so it was just it was a really nice experience to get back with the team on the pitch, um, and hoping I can keep working um, on that and uh, keep improving and getting my flow with the with the team coming into this week. One more question from me. Um, Louisville um, is a team that seems to like to be really disruptive in the midfield in particular, and I'm wondering what your focus will be um, to really try to prevent some of their threats. Yeah, I think they do have a lot of um, great attacking threats, and so I think for us it's making sure that we're nullifying their transition, especially their team that can transition quite well, and so I think you know, it's really important for the holding midfield role to be able to nullify their threat and making sure that we're connected with our back line to um, make sure that we're maintaining our numbers and trying to keep them locked out so they can't exploit us on that transitional piece. Thanks, Susie. And then Rich, go ahead. Hey, Quinn, appreciate your time. Um, I've been asking this question to a few players in the league recently just about you know, from overseas at least, it looked like over the, the off-season probably there'd never been an off-season where there were as many sort of big international players going into the league, whether that was, you know, we've seen a real influx of Brazilian players, some of the top African players, you know, a lot of European players now with, with European coaches in the league. As someone that's been in the league a few years now, like, is, it, is the style starting to change and evolve a little bit? You know, a few of the, the coaches have said, you know, it's always had that rep of being quite transitional. Like, is it starting to change and evolve a little bit now with, with all the international players? Yeah, I would say so. I think that the style of our league is evolving. I still think that it's a league that's different from any other one in the world in the sense that it's quite a, you know, a physical, fast league. Um, I would say that still people even, <laughs> you know, the European players or the international players that are coming over are still needing to adapt to the unique style of the NWSL, but I also think, you know, you're seeing that influence um, of people bringing their own personality and coaches bringing their own ideas, and so, yeah, I think we've seen some changes from, you know, different teams, different players, and I think it's an exciting iteration to where our league is going, but I still think maintaining, you know, the things that keep the NWSL as they are um, is, is really important as well. Yeah, do you relish that as a player, like you say? I mean, you've still got, like you say, some of the top North American players when you think about a Sophia Smith or Trinity Rodman, you know, that are, are probably incredibly tough to come up against in that transitional style, but you know, going into every game every week, probably knowing now that you're going to face something a little bit different. It's um, it's always been a league that has been one of the best in the world and, and certainly probably the most competitive from top to bottom. But I guess it's adding a, another dynamic to it now as well. Yeah, I think so. And I think that's definitely one of the huge positives of playing in this league is just every single game, you know, you're going to get a unique competition and it's going to be extremely competitive. You really don't know. Um, you know, watching each game, who's going who's gonna to come out on top. And so I think that's a really exciting point to our league. And I think as a player, being able to adapt to, you know, everything that you face each week is and being able to prepare for that, I think is it just allows for so much growth within the league. And I think that's something that players really seek out when they're coming to the NWSL. Thanks, Quinn. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Rich. And then Steve? Hi, Quinn. Thanks for talking with us this morning. I wanted to ask, tomorrow is the club's annual Pride game, and you guys did some activities with kids in the community earlier in the week. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about kind of the you know, significance of that to you personally and the you know, inclusion and recognition of um, LGBTQ people in the league and with the team in particular. Yeah, I think it's so important to, you know, not only me, but our team as a whole. Um, we're a team that really likes to put our values at the forefront. And so for us, I think LGBTQ inclusion is one of them. Um, and I know me specifically, it's been really exciting to see the team really support, you know, the Seattle community. The partnership with trans families has been hugely important to us in, in making sure that LGBTQ inclusion specifically in our sport 
um, is happening in the Seattle area and giving you know young folks the opportunity to see themselves in in um, you know in professional sports um, is really exciting and so I I love that our teammates are so involved in, in that and in the community as a whole. Thank you. Thanks Steve. Looks like that'll be it for questions. Thanks everyone. Thanks Quinn. Sweet. Perfect. Cool. Good.